This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. And we are back live here in Think Tech Studio, Hawaii. I'm your host, Prince Dykes, coming to you guys live all the way from Honolulu, Hawaii. And guess what, guys? We didn't get canceled. We got another episode, so we're going to enjoy it. But as you guys already see in the description box, today's episode is going to be about interest rates, federal government interest rates. And I know you're probably thinking, man, well, why is that so important? So to start this thing off, one thing that I, I was at Berkshire, which is Warren Buffett's, the greatest investor of our time, annual meeting two months ago. And one of the things he said, he was like, hey, if I could have one tool going into the future, this is verbatim, if he could have one tool going into the future, he would like to know what interest rates would be. And I wrote that down and I said, okay, interest rates, that seemed like it might be a little important. But we're gonna go through and we're gonna talk about what are interest rates, what are, um, why are they important, future interest rate, how you can invest in this interest rate market, all the other great stuff. But as always guys, I don't have a lot of time and I definitely know you guys don't have a lot of time, so we're gonna jump straight into it. So with this topic, I brought in a very special guest. We're talking about a 40 year Wall Street veteran that was around in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, um, James Fortland. If you follow me before on the Investor Show, you've seen him before coming in all the way from Wall Street and I have him on the line today, and I want to go ahead and introduce him. How is it going, James? Hey, how are you today? I'm doing outstanding. Thank you for calling in. For people who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself and this uh, financial industry. Oh, I am, I guess the basic, the, the important thing to know about me is I had worked, uh, I had been involved in investing basically since I was a kid uh, in the 70s. Um, then I worked on Wall Street from about 1982 till 2008, I guess, is the whole time where I was full time. Okay. Um, so being around the market and stuff like that, right? So you're an expert. You've seen I've a lot. I've seen right? a few ups and downs. I don't uh -huh. know if I call myself an expert, but I've gone through a couple of market cycles. Okay. Well, that's experience, right? That's a lot of experience that you have. Now, this thing, uh, federal government interest rate, to anybody out there listening, what are the federal government interest rates? Well, right, right now, what you have is an unusual situation where you have historically low interest rates, and they've remained historically low for probably, I guess, the better part of 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's just – it's abnormally low. And for a lot of people, you're just about to, to see the Federal Reserve is in the process of raising those rates up from those historically low levels. Okay. Now, the thing I want to piggyback off of what James just said, he's talking about the interest rates are historically low. Now, the federal government interest rates, they are so important because they control all of the interest rate. It goes in a domino effect. The federal government, it has its own rates that you know, uh, the, the chairman, Jane Yellen, she controls, and she's the one that controls the, the uh, interest rates that the banks get. And you know, the banks control our credit cards, our houses, our loans, all the good stuff like that. It's a way that they can raise and lower the interest rates, which is one of their most powerful tools. Right now, the interest rates, he said, at a historic low is at 1.16 currently as August 11th. Now, they meet about every year, the Federal Reserves, and they can decide whether to raise interest rates or to lower interest rates. And they raise interest rates to, in a way, to slow down inflation, slow down inflation to cool out the market, to make sure we don't build this big asset bubble. And we got into this low interest rate society uh, big when, in 2008 as part of a stimulus package to stimulate the government, the government lowered interest rates, and by lowering the federal government interest rate, it's freed up a lot of money. So people will more, businesses will more likely borrow more money because it's cheap. You have a low interest rate, business say, hey, you know what, we can buy this and maybe hire more employees, build more things and stuff like that. So now we've been in a bull market here since around about 2009, which means the market has been going up, 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 and now we're kind of seeing interest rates kind of curve and cut up a little bit, you know, 
uh, from going from zero practically, and now they're at 1.16. And James is saying, hey, we've been in this thing for a long time. Now, I know you've probably seen something like this play in the past. How did it affect our economy in the stock market, you would say? Well, first of all, we need, we need to go and look at what really went on. You mentioned the 2008 financial crisis. Um, the Federal Reserve lowered rates, and then they went into a uh, – they even tried to push rates lower by doing something called quantitative easing, which is a really big word for basically they printed a lot of money and they pushed it into the economy. The idea is just what you said, make money easier that people, so people will spend it. The reality probably is more that the money went into the stock market and made the stock market go up more than people spent it. Um, what you have now is you have two big issues going on with the Fed. The Fed, under normal circumstances, we always say if interest rates go up, stocks go down. If interest rates go up, Bond prices go down. Um, but this is a very long telegraphed move by Janet Yellen, the Fed chair. She's been signaling she wants to raise rates for a very long time. She has, she has really two problems here. The first problem is she needs the data to prove that the economy is getting stronger. But the second problem, that's a lingering problem, probably since the end of the Greenspan era, uh, which now we're talking probably in the early, like I would say, you know, in the 1990s, um, Greenspan was talking about this. The measurement tools that the Fed has, uh, there's a lot of skepticism about how accurate they are at measuring the economy. So Yellen's been looking for an excuse to raise rates, but she needs to see it in the data. And the data so far has been very mixed, although this morning we had, an, we had a fairly significant increase in retail sales. Um, so I think that's going to that's gonna get her to you know, start to ratchet things up, albeit very slowly. Okay. Um, the the Fed works best for 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 investors. Um, I think my point is is that a lot of the interest rate raises are already in. They're sort of in the market already. They're already calculated, and because interest rates are at this historically abnormally low level, it's going to take a while for us just to get up to what normal interest rates might be, like the norm, the. The, 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 what, what, really sh what really interest rates should be. Um, traditionally, if the Fed were to make rapid movements one way or other, either raising interest rates or lowering interest rates, it would dramatically impact the stock market. But the stock market historically has liked if the Fed like, got on a program and said, hey, we're going to start raising rates a quarter of a point every 60 days or every 90 days or every – like if, if, if the Fed goes – like creates a plan and starts to follow through, the market's probably not going to be too bothered at these levels by whatever the Fed's doing. If the Fed suddenly becomes very erratic and sort of waits too long and then has to ratchet interest rates up really quickly, um, that that could create a lot of blowback with the stock market. In other words, you could you know you could knock the market down really significantly. Okay, now by you saying this, right, you make some great, very great points. Since he's talking about Jane Yellen, you know they call her Mother Goose on Wall Street, correct? Yes, yes, she's the mother goose. <laughs> so she's mother goose on Wall Street, and she has the power, you know, once they're elected by the, uh, once they're appointed by the governor, I mean, the president. Right, they're, yeah, and, they're appointed. Mm -hmm, and the Senate approves them, they're pretty much, you know, in their own little lane to do whatever they want to do. Now, the thing about it is that he spoke about quantitative easing. You know, people call that pumping money into this market. And, you know, some people say, hey, well, we think it's created a bubble, but... The thing about it now, James, is that we're at this historically low um, interest rates level. Where do you see interest rates going into the future, and what effect do you think it would have on the stock market? 
Well, I think if there's a – because this has been such a long telegraph process so in advance, I think you see a lot of that in the market already. The market is reflecting – um, in my view, much higher interest rates than now, All, although much higher interest rates than now would still be very low interest rates. Okay. And I think that's what you have to you have to understand is that we're coming up from a really low floor. Okay. So we're going to need to raise rates. The Fed's going to need to raise rates really significantly to even get to where. Um, it starts to become an issue. Like I, I think we're – it's sort of under the radar yet. Like rates can go up quite a bit from here, maybe even double from where they are uh, at the Fed level, and that that may have very little impact on the stock market. But once you start to push past, say, doubling where they are here or maybe – then you're going to – then it's going to start to be a, a measured move. <clears throat> and the market may have some issues digesting like much higher rates. Okay. Um, again, it's all in the follow through is if the Fed does this methodically over a long period of time, they keep talking about it. I mean, Yellen's on TV every minute saying, look, we're looking to raise rates. And then sometimes she'll backtrack and go, but I'm not seeing the numbers yet to raise rates, but I feel like we should. Well, now with retail sales going up a lot, there's some other issues that you might think that are, are implying that the economy is starting to move forward at a much faster pace. Um, I think she's going she's gonna to start to follow through now. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to go back to what I first said is you got to still look at the data, and the data has got to really prove out for the Fed chair – the data she looks at has got to say, hey, this economy is growing. Inflation is starting to build. That's what she wants. To then she's going to raise rates to combat that. I think one of the issues has been is that despite her talk, in the, I would say probably in the last year, two years almost, um, of, of trying to raise rates, the data hasn't really – it hasn't followed through. We've had a good quarter, a bad quarter, an okay quarter, a good quarter. It's been very inconsistent. And and then, of course, there's a lot of people who argue that the data the Fed uses doesn't really measure the economy correctly. Um, inflation is much higher than the Fed is measuring it at. Okay. Um, well, hold on, the James. Economy is Before we uh, go any further, we got to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back with Perfect. more from James, and we're going to come back with my opinion and stuff like that. So, guys, stay tuned <clears throat> to the Prince of Investing. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. But grandmother, what big eyes you have. She said. What are you doing? Research says reading from birth accelerates our baby's brain development. Push. Ah! Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. And guys, we're back. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't seen us earlier, we're talking about the federal government interest rates and your investments. Now, we did a lot of talking before the commercial break, talking about, you know, uh, the interest rates, where they at, and historically, and things like that. Now, I, and I'm joined by my very special guest, but before I jump back into that, I want to give you guys like a simple way of people saying, hey, how interest rates could affect the stock market. Not only the stock market, we're talking about real estate, your credit card, banks, loans, all that type of stuff. That's why it's so important. But one of the things people say, hey, if the government raises interest rates, the stock market, the stock market is at an all-time high. This morning we had great retail reports. If the, if the federal government gets good indications and data that 
the market is going up, they have a tool that they can raise particular interest rates. Now, what raising interest rates does is it makes money a little bit harder to get. It makes the money a little bit more expensive to tune to uh, to be able to borrow. So theoretically, companies will borrow less. And when companies borrow less, they don't count, they don't it slows down their expansion, which relates to people payroll people may not spend less and it's a tool to kind of cool off the economy and when companies borrow less and quit expanding it can hurt their revenues and profits and may affect the stock market in that way to where people may go into a higher interest rate society thinking that hey the market could uh, affect negatively now to go more in detail to how this relates to you i have my special guest the 40-year Wall Street veteran here, James Fortland, calling in from Wall Street. James, what do you have to say as far as explaining it to someone right now? What are the federal government interest rates and why are they important? All right, so I'm going to grossly oversimplify this to make it so so at every level, people, your your, your the listeners will understand what I'm talking about. Um, the Federal Reserve has a key rate that they will lend to banks like big banks like Citibank and all these and JP Morgan and Chase and all these big banks and the banks say suddenly they borrow money from the Federal Reserve at a 1% and now the Federal Reserve raises it to 2%. Now that's they won't raise it a whole point in one shot but that's I'm just trying to make a point here. So how does that affect you? That means that say uh, Chase Bank, if you go to get a mortgage, they're gonna that raise is gonna be reflected in those mortgages. So at every level of the economy, the price of money, uh, in other words, interest rates will go up. So it, it kind of it reflects. And and Prince was 100% right. In theory, that's how it all works. Money gets more expensive, so businesses and individuals um, spend less because it's more expensive. It, the, the car that you wanted to buy or the house you wanted to buy at, say, uh, say the house at a 5% mortgage that you could afford at a 7% mortgage is too expensive, so you can't buy the house anymore. So these are the kind of things that happen. My point is twofold earlier on is that I'm, what what I think is because rates are at this historically low, it's like an anomaly. They're not even at the norm yet. And mm. I think that we have a little wiggle room here where the Fed can raise rates fairly without – with very little uh, backlash on the economy because – the rates are just so low, it doesn't make any difference. Now, James, um, now, he, now that we're in this historically low interest rate society, how one who's an investor or maybe a common investor, do you see any opportunities one should be taking advantage of? For example, you were saying, hey, uh, you go to buy, borrow money to buy a house, the interest rates are low, and the interest rates are going to go up, what's going to make it more expensive to buy a house. Should I be capitalizing on the low interest rates to buy a house? Or would you say, hey, uh, is there any other things that you can see that I possibly could be taking advantage of as far as like a common investor? What's some things that maybe some opportunities there that you may want to look at in a low interest rate society like this? Well, first of all, uh, businesses that are very capital intensive, uh, traditionally get very hurt when interest rates go up. For example, historically, utilities would get hurt if interest rates would go up. The real estate business would get hurt when interest rates go up. Um, any big, a lot of industrial companies who had to lay out a lot of money to borrow and build big plant and equipment would be hurt. Um, I would say that, but however, the flip side of all this that we're that we're we got to remember because I think we have a little cushion here for a while, because you have what you have to weigh is the impact of interest rate increases against all the other things going on. Um, are the impact of interest rate increases going to outweigh economic growth? Are they going to outweigh deregulation? Are they going to outweigh? Um, all the other factors that are going on. So you have um, a balance of that. And I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, to make money now because the economy is, uh, the, if the Fed can, can, starts to raise rates consistently, they're telling us the economy is growing a lot faster than it's grown in a long time. Mm. 
And so you would look at industries uh, that could take advantage. Uh, for example, today, retail sales were a lot bigger than they had been in a very long time. Um, there's, there's other uh, – any industry that's like that where people that's because of – that may, can do well off a growing economy. I would say that uh, a lot of it is the typical stuff you think of, uh, companies like technology companies that offer consumer goods will probably do really well for a while just because the economy is growing faster. Um, some older traditional industries like perhaps people are going to buy more cars. Now, mind you, it has to weigh, is the economy, the better economy, good enough to outweigh the slightly higher price you're going to pay in interest rates? That's what every investor has to weigh. I would say to, you're more apt to watch out for certain things, like I probably wouldn't be buying bonds, in this, especially longer bonds in this kind of environment. I wouldn't be buying utility stocks in this now, kind think of about, environment. Uh, James, to, to piggyback on that, why wouldn't you be purchasing bonds? Why, why do you say, hey, bonds, well, you know, wouldn't be a good yeah, look right bonds now? Yeah, are, bonds are, you know, bonds always are, are like the opposite. Like if interest rates go up, bonds mm -hmm. go down. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a simple process because if you have a 10-year bond and it yields 2% and interest rates are 1%, um, that bond yield is based on the duration, the 10 years, plus the credit quality of the bond. Okay. Now, suddenly, uh, interest rates are 3%. And your 2% bond, the price has to reflect, reflect a new reality in interest rates. So the price of the bond itself may go down. The bond will still pay the, if it's a good company and it's all good credit uh, mm -hmm. rated. Um, it will still pay the you know will still pay the dividends all the time. But the price of the bond is going to go down to to reflect. It's going to take that two percent yield, and now it's going to make the yield three percent, which means the price of the bond itself is going to have to go lower at market value to reflect that higher yield. Okay. And so you don't you don't want to get involved in any of these like long term bond Bonds. funds, okay. um, uh, just buying bonds out too far. This is not an environment to buy bonds, especially now, especially now, long term. Now, like you said, you said, hey, bonds maybe not so. But I like what you highlighted earlier when you said, hey, well, think about things that customers buy because and and, and the reason why I said that's a good thing is because think about it, right? Like we said. Borrowing money is very cheap right now. So you can borrow money for very low. So companies can borrow money for very low, which they can use that money to expand their business, hire employees, come up with new products, pay higher salaries and stuff like that. Uh, unemployment is at a historic low. I mean, people are theoretically have jobs. And when people have jobs and they make more money, they spend more money. And the thing about that is, well, when people make more money, they spend more money, and also they are approved for more credit. Now, when they get this credit, then that means that they usually go buy more stuff because most, let's be honest, most employees, when they get paid, they buy stuff. So what you mean like uh, cars, not maybe cars, clothes, stuff like that. So I can understand the correlation where you can say, hey, uh, things that can see a spike are things are that are consumed by customers, like things like maybe your retail or your grocery stores and grocery lines and stuff like that, because people will have a tendency to buy more. Am I am I making a correct statement on your analysis there? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, what I'm saying is, under normal circumstances, raising rates would maybe slow that process down. Mm -hmm. But uh, because we have this historically like below normal interest rate environment, interest rates could go up quite a bit, and they're still even doubling from where they are. They're still very low by historic standards. That is so true. It's, it, it's it's like we have like a window here where we have a very unusual circumstance where I think rates can go up quite a bit, yet the econ it's it's more of a sign that the economy is really taken off and that mm -hmm. things are good. Like under normal circumstances, it might say that the economy is overheating and that inflation is boiling up and like maybe some negative things are coming. But I think in this particular situation, um it's it's kind of an unusual situation because of the 2008 financial crisis and, and quantitative easing and a bunch of other weird stuff that are all thrown in there.
Okay. And that's a very good, and the thing that you're old school, right? I got into Real investing the world around like 2007, 2008. So, Sino, uh, you know, before the 2008 crash happened, uh, financial recession happened, interest rates are around about 4%. And now, you know, they've, you know, they've ducked down to already, you know, it went to zero essentially. And now we've kind of right. seen a little uptick. So, in my investing experience and history, we've kind of always historically been in a low interest rate environment, but you coming from the 90s, 70s, 80s, you're like, hey, this is extremely low. Because yeah, if, I mean, if, if I go back over 60 4% chart, uh -huh. it's a very low interest rate. Yeah, that's, that's true. Because when, we, when, when uh, 2008 happened, everybody was like, you know, well, interest rates are already low. At that time, I didn't understand what interest rate really was. I mean, I knew what interest rates was in general, but I didn't know how the Federal Reserve and Jane Yellen and Alan Greenspan and uh, what was the, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, his name is Bar Bernanke, right? If I'm saying that. Uh, no, that, uh, Ben Bernanke yeah, was the, ben... Uh, the Fed chair after Greenspan. Yes. And then Yellen was after Ben Bernanke. Mm -hmm. um, ben okay. Bernanke is also often referred to as the Bernanke, like people just call him the Bernanke. The Bernanke. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's what that's what he's called. That's his nickname. And okay. uh, um, and then uh, the the chairman of Goldman Sachs is Lloyd Blankfein, but that that like the the often a Fed governor is more an academic uh, economist. They usually okay. don't come right from Wall Street, but that's not into a hundred percent true either. Okay, but like you, you know, the, you know, not at Fed chair. We're seeing how important that is, and how it affects our everyday economy, and how it can even affect yes. our investments, even us buying homes, uh, loans, uh, loans, credit cards, and stuff like that. But James, we're getting yes. ready to uh, close out the show. Is there anything or any advice out there that you would want to lend to any watchers or listeners or anything like that? Well, again, I want to repeat, and this is because we went from an ex, like a historically low. So, for example, when I in the 70s, when mm -hmm. interest rates were very high, we used to talk about the heyday of the 50s when interest rates were four and five percent for 10 years. And that was considered the good old days where interest rates were very low. Wow. Now we're in a period where we would have to have a fairly significant interest rate increase to get up to 4% or 5%. Um, and what I'm saying is, unlike normal circumstances, this is an unusual circumstance due to the financial crisis in 2008. And so there's a big window here. And I think for investors, this is further evidence that I, I think the stock market is still going to go a lot higher from where it is here. And I think that this is, um, from a business standpoint, I think this is further evidence that the economy is starting to pick up a lot of steam, which it needs to. Because okay. even though, as you pointed out, everybody we have this big employment number, which is still a little debatable about how how big the, how many people are actually employed or unemployed. The biggest problem in my mind is there is an income growth for the regular guy. The regular guy is probably making less money than he made twenty years ago. Wow, and that that's a big problem. And to make that even more important. You know, the federal government, they control what comes on our money market accounts, our checking account, our savings account, the interest that you earn. And we're in a very low interest rate society, so you have to invest because what the federal government is giving you in your checking, savings account, CDs are not even matching inflation. So you have to invest some type of way, and we're at a mar stock market right now that's at an all-time high. We at a low, uh, low unemployment and all the other great stuff. But anyway, guys, my name is Prince Danks. This is the Prince of Investing. Guys, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And don't forget, each and every Tuesday, we will be here. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank our very special guests. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until the next episode, podcast, and next Tuesday, thank you guys. Peace. Be safe. I'm out. Thank you. And hopefully, we don't get canceled.